Normally when we think of chemical reactions, we just think of it as a static process. A plus B gives C and D. Reactants give products. But the truth is that it's a far more dynamic situation. A and B give C and D, but as my products start building up, the reverse reaction can start taking place. C and D can go back to A and B. And it's very much like like vapor pressure. I have a jar and I seal some liquid in it. Some of it begins to evaporate and eventually I get a lot of gas molecules in there and when the concentration of this gets high enough they start going back into the liquid and it reaches an equilibrium. It's the same kind of idea but with chemical reactions. So here's a graph. Suppose that this is the rate at which A plus B goes to C plus D. And this green one is C plus D going to A plus B. So this is the way we normally think about it. Reactants going to products. And this is a reverse reaction. Products going to reactants. In the beginning, I have a lot of reactant, so the rate at which C and D are being created is very high. And the beginning, there is no C and D, so it's at zero. So the rate is at zero. But as this reaction goes, uh, goes along, A and B are going to reduce in concentration, so the likelihood of me getting C and D is going to reduce, so the rate is going to slow down and the rate at which C plus D goes to A plus B is going to start to increase because in the beginning there's none of this, none of these products and as more and more get created then there's a higher and higher probability of the reverse reaction taking, going to take place. So what happens is these, this reaction goes along until both of these things are equal to each other and they reach an equilibrium and that's what I mean when I say that many reactions are very dynamic. It's not just some product is formed, there's constantly product being formed and then it's being turned back into reactant and then being turned back into product. It's like the vapor, it's like the vapor pressure where it's a very dynamic situation. There's things evaporating and then condensating, evaporating, condensating all the time. And this leads up to how to talk about equilibriums. Well, what is done is that there is a constant that is found of products divided by the reactants. And when it's at equilibrium, they find the different concentrations of these reactants and products at equilibrium, and they divide by each other and then that constant gives the equilibrium constant. That is the ratio of products over reactants at the equilibrium state. And K is for a particular system value. So it's got a temperature associated with the pressure. Normally it's done at STP, standard temperature and pressure. If those are adjusted, then it will move the equilibrium one way or the other.